sorry about that <laughs> I messed it up while trying to switch around but anyway just quickly a uh, quick introduction to the cats again if this first bit didn't go out okay that's uh, that's Domino fast asleep there and moving about now is Brian and then lying there fast asleep still is Mr Boots our oldest cat and I know he's got a bit of a fan club uh, with Rebecca Turner also Lily and uh, also Lisa as well who said oh let me know how Mr Boots is getting on there you go so there he is this morning quick look at the sky again uh, lovely blue skies this morning things are looking really really nice today after yesterday's grim weather and I've got to be honest yesterday did actually feel really like winter yesterday for the first time right okay now let me carefully turn the camera around so you can see uh, my dulcet face there we go well I've got to be honest <clears throat> today is going to be a bit covid heavy because there's been a lot going on I know a lot's been going on in the UK as well but I'm going to be concentrating what's happening here in Greece but first of all just let's say that uh, yesterday Jane and I we were down at the airport taking friends back who were flying out yesterday um, I've got to be honest the airport was quiet in comparison to what we're what we're used to uh, there were approximately eight flights in yesterday. Uh, two of the flights were to the UK, which was Gatwick and Liverpool. Um, there was also two flights to Poland uh, in yesterday. Uh, there was also one from Switzerland. And one that really caught my eye yesterday on the old uh, board was their flight in from Austria as well. So the Austrians are still coming, the Swiss are still coming, Poles are still coming. And uh, it actually was revealed yesterday that Poland now is the number one demographic for tourists this year in in Zakynthos. Normally, uh, the number one demographic of arrivals would be the British. So again, uh, it's Poland at number one. I think Britain was round about number two. Uh, number three was the Dutch. Uh, number four, uh, the Italians. And then it was Austria and Germany and the French uh, way, way down. But um, yeah, the demographic for this year obviously changing. And interestingly enough, um, the airport also reported yesterday uh, that on Sunday night, they actually arrested an illegal uh, migrant who um, was trying to get onto a flight to get into Europe. This is quite common uh, here in Greece. Uh, basically, people uh, get fraudulent papers created and because you don't need a passport to travel within Europe and you can travel on some form of ID, uh, there's a sort of a trade in that. And um, uh, Zakynthos arrested somebody and there was also arresting Corfu and Kefalonia for other illegal aliens uh, trying to get into Europe via flights from the local airports. Anyway, uh, so what's been going on? Well, first of all, just quick look at the um, case numbers for today. Um, on the 29th of September, there's been 269 new cases of the virus reported here in Greece. Um, and there has been four deaths as well. Um, at the moment, looking at the figures this morning, um, 11 of those new cases are from ports of entry. Uh, one of them was a volunteer, somebody who voluntarily came forward for testing and was found to be positive. At the moment, uh, 73 people are in uh, intensive care at the moment. And um, looking at the figures for passing through intensive care, at the moment, 201 people have been through intensive care and, and obviously uh, come out of it at the moment. So at the moment, 73 people in ICUs. Um, also, what's interesting in regards to the, to the new cases, um, 23 are from association with other known infections, i.e. family member, somebody at work, etc., etc. But only, only four deaths at the moment. Um, interestingly, we also had a cruise ship uh, come into Piraeus. Now, this cruise ship at the time was sailing uh, to Corfu. Anyway, uh, on board they were doing testing on the ship. They found that uh, 12 members of the crew tested positive. And so, therefore, the ship was ordered to sail to Piraeus, where it docked early this morning. Uh, Greek Health went on board, uh, started carrying out further tests uh, on the crew. It was then discovered that of the 12 people that were t tested, 
six were a uh, false positive. And uh, the other six at the moment, according to the local press reports, are still waiting uh, for results at the moment. Now, it's been deemed that nobody will be allowed off the ship. And the ship, uh, which has got a very unusual name for a cruise ship, the Mindschrift 6, or is it Sieben 6 in German? I'm trying to remember. Or Zex, I can't remember, one of the two. Um, they have been told that no one is allowed to uh, uh, disembark from the vessel. They have 920 passengers on from Crete actually and were on, on Corfu when they were diverted into Piraeus and um, basically what's happening now is the Greek Health Authority is going to be doing uh, t a random testing of the passengers and anybody that tests uh, negative will then receive a certificate to say that they have tested negative within the last 72 hours and then the vessel will be allowed then when they deem uh, safe for it then to sail on to its next port of call which is Corfu so we'll keep an eye on that and just see what happens uh, I used to work in the cruise industry so I'm always very curious as to uh, what goes on uh, with cruise ships uh, they are saying that this was the first cruise ship in Greek waters but I do remember a, about a couple of weeks ago we had a cruise ship here that came to visit Zakynthos and um, there were more crew on board than there were people oh and by the way this uh, mine uh, my, the mine shift six actually is actually a TUI vessel as well so uh, and um, the the, uh, the media is now saying this is a bit of a blow for the cruise industry because uh, obviously they were hoping cruise ships were going to be getting back into service and obviously back and um, again it's a shame it, it wasn't coming here <laughs> We would like to cruise ship in occasionally for a bit of extra money. But anyway, we shall wait and see uh, what happens with that one. And uh, I'll let you know. Um, also as well, as I said, this is a bit uh, COVID heavy this morning. Um, Athens now, uh, sorry, Greece now are putting five new measures in uh, for um, enhanced measures now for COVID. And they're basically looking at prevention and testing. Now, at the moment, um, the government announced yesterday that they are going to turn eight community centres in Athens uh, into uh, testing centres where they will focus on the vulnerable, uh, old, older people, uh, uh, people with children, like that. Um, and they will be able to go in there and be tested quickly and efficiently. Athens also... There's a homeless shelter as well in Athens, and that homeless shelter, again, they are going to uh, have access to rapid testing. They're also going to open two more shelters for the homeless in Athens, which is a good, um, a good thing, because if you've ever been to Athens, um, you can be really shocked by the homelessness there. Um, it's so open, uh, probably worse than in some capital cities, um, but they're now opening two more um, shelters uh, for the homeless where, again, testing will be able to be carried out. Um, the Greek Health Authority has also uh, said that it will go into areas of high um, cases of uh, coronavirus and they will carry out more testing with extra nurses in those locations. And lastly, it seems now that the Greek uh, police across the country now, they're going to be now basically all connected in a joint operations centre uh, which will focus on prevention of, uh, of uh, the virus as well. So they're getting more coordinated uh, across the country now where obviously different authorities can speak to each other and say uh, and implement whatever measures they want to implement to obviously uh, to keep everybody safe, all right? I say that with a bit of a, a raised eyebrow. Anyway, I, one thing that did catch my eye yesterday evening uh, was um, I was looking at about a, a story in England about the new measures coming there, about the closing of pubs in certain areas. At with the fact that loud music now is banned in bars and restaurants in Britain 
Um, and I was looking at the, 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 the regulations on that where people or DJs are not allowed to play music in bars and pubs in Britain over 85 decibels. Well, all I can say is that in Greece, we dream of being able to play music above 80 decibels, let alone 85 decibels. The amount of bars and restaurants that have been booked for loud music before coronavirus, because uh, noise has always been a contentious issue with a lot of places uh, here in, in Zakethos. And I thought, 85 decibels? I dream of 85 decibels. But anyway... Uh, that's uh, that was a little aside there. Right, um, let's have a quick look at who's tuning in at the moment. I do apologise for that first break in transmission. I hope I didn't lose too many people. Uh, can I just say hello to Lisa Jane Baker? Nice to see you here. Gary Eden, ex Raf Reg buddy of mine. Nice to have you here as well. Amanda Gregory, I think that's Amanda from just up the road from us. Nice to have you here tuning in. Also, Ian Booth says, good morning, Ginge. Good morning, Ian. How's the weather at the moment where you are? Just curious. Um, also, as well, Christopher Lloyd-Jones. Nice to have you tuning in as well. Uh, Teresa Ann Haggart. Ah, oh, Teresa Ann. Now, if I remember rightly, I think that is somebody in Margate, okay, uh, where my mum is in the nursing home. But don't quote me on that. The name is ringing a bell at the moment. Anyway, nice to have you with us. Uh, Alan Woodhouse, nice to have you as well. Uh, Teresa Ann Huggett also says good morning. Uh, Chick Ballantyne also says good morning as well. Nice to have you as well. Um, what's it? Wesley is watching as well. Nice to have you there as well, Wes. Uh, Debbie uh, Walston Home, I think that's how you pronounce Walston Home. Uh, she's tuning in. I'm not sure if that's Debbie who's got a place here at the moment. Uh, who normally likes to hang out down at Melon Bar when she's over. But uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Lyndon, yeah, we all know Lyndon. How are you doing, Lyndon? Nice to have you tuning in as well. Giving you a wave as well. Uh, Sue Moore, you're tuning in as well. Brett Weston's tuning in. Jan Lawrence is tuning in. Nice to have you. Sean Gibbons is also tuning in as well. Uh, Jamie Loveland is tuning in as well. Nice to have that. Den Denise Williams is watching. Tommy, uh, Tommy Burns, old referee buddy. Nice to have you tuning in as well. Gail Marsden, nice to have you tuning in as well, Gail. Is that Gail? No, that's not the Gail. No, it's a different Gail. I'm just trying to think of somebody else. Anyway, nice to have you there. Uh, Chippy Woods, nice to have you here as well, old Chippy Woods. Uh, Dawn Usher, nice to have you as well. Karen Smith, nice to have you as well. Uh, Steve Hilton, nice to see you as well. Here's Steve. Uh, he says, good morning. Jane Mackay Gunn says, morning. Uh, Liz Kimberly says morning. Ashley Gregory says it is laugh out, laugh sunny. <laughs> it is funny. It is sunny, actually. Oh, it's sunny. OK, thank you. I've lost that one. And also Nick Haviland is also tuning in as well. Right. So, um, oh, just quickly, I, I was up in Sylvie last night, but I didn't stop up there very long. Um, had a little whiz round, went and had um, a cup of coffee, believe it or not down in Magdalena's because I was still getting over still from the night before. Uh, and um, yeah, it was looking, it was looking quiet at the moment in Sylvie. Um slowly kind of uh, winding down. Uh, Magdalena's is still open at the moment. Uh, Dennis is just seeing how things go. It was just Dennis, Artie and um, Alex in last night. Uh, I know people, uh, were chasing me last night to come down. Uh, can I say a quick hello to Heart, Heather and Paul? Uh, I, I'm, I missed you. All right. Obviously, you'd come out and I'd missed you. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, there, it, there's still people around. It's not as busy as it was. The restaurants as well. Oh, yeah. Can I say a quick hello to Obelix as well, to George and Nick there? They're at the moment um, uh, just sort of... You know, they, they have having a few people in when I was there, but again, not many. They're like a lot of the restaurants now. They're all looking as to whether it's wise for them to carry on or whether it's not, or whether for the case of some places, just carrying on so that they can get the time in uh, to give people their stamp for the unemployment as well here on the because obviously ECA is now a big question. Now, ECA, for those people who don't know what that is, that's the unemployment benefit that people will receive in the winter. And the seasonal workers obviously rely on that. 
And obviously, a lot of the seasonal workers are worried that they may not qualify for it. So some of the restaurants and bars are staying open, literally, <clears throat> just so that they can say their employees are still working uh, and they can pay them as well so that they get their ECA. The danger is, is that if you miss one year's ECA, then you're out of the system for two. And... Um, and nobody wants to be in that position. But I know there's uh, there's certain schemes that the government are talking about. I'm going to look at those in a little bit more detail. I don't want to say anything about them at the moment in case I get it wrong. Um, but, um, yeah, people now, especially those who are still working, are praying that they're going to get their unemployment benefit uh, in, in the winter. So, anyway, that's it from me. Uh, thank you again. There's people still saying hello. Uh, Tim Crystal, nice to have you there, mate. Uh, also as well, Jill Ford as well, and Ian as well, is Ian Daly, uh, oh, it, yeah, Ian Daly, that's Ian in, in Broadstairs, I think, tuning in, uh, but anyway, uh, nice to have you still joining me, uh, I'll be back again tomorrow with any more information as to what's going on, I am slowly getting the little studio together, uh, I'm going to start doing some live broadcasts at uh, different times, and I am considering doing a special show for my mum, who's in nursing home uh, in Margate. So big shout out to mum in Margate. I'm not sure if you're watching this morning, uh, but I know you were watching yesterday. That was really, really good. Uh, I'm not sure how your hospital appointment went either. But anyway, hopefully everything's going to be OK. But anyway, uh, that's it from me for today. I will speak to you again soon. I think I've got cleaning to do today. <laughs> we're doing the winter cleans, getting things sorted out. And I will uh, speak to you again soon. Ta-ra, catch you later.